In this notebook we will learn how to use deep learning algorithms to do semantic segmentation. Semantic segmentation is a computer vision task in which the goal is to categorize each pixel in an image into a class or object. For this purpose we will use one of the most known deep learning library, PyTalk. We will also take advantage of TorchGeo which is particularly useful for doing machine learning when geospatial data is involved. In particular we will see how to download a dataset, visualize the data, train a model and do predictions on validation data. It is recommended to run the following notebook on a GPU to reduce training times. For this tutorial I've only CPU available and the model has been trained on a GPU on the cloud. In any case the code is compatible, as we will see, with CPU and GPU. Let's start by importing needed libraries. For this notebook we're going to use the NAIP, National Agriculture Imagery Program, dataset and we will combine it with the Chesapeake land cover map. The NAIP dataset contains aerial imagery during the agricultural growing seasons in the continental US. This imagery is acquired at 1 meter ground sample distance with a geoaccuracy of 6 meters and with 4 bands, near infrared plus visible bands. The Chesapeake land cover map contains high resolution land cover labels from the Chesapeake Bay watershed which includes the states of New York, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, Virginia, and the District of Columbia. Each pixel in the land cover map is labeled according to a different land cover type as described in the referenced source documentation. First of all, let's check if your machine has a GPU, as you can see in my case I don't have it on my local laptop. Let's da download some tiles from the NAIP dataset by creating a temporal folder. Depending on your connection speed this code block may take a few minutes. In my case I have already downloaded the data. We can open one of the downloaded GeoTIFF and print some information as the shape, CRS and resolution. We can now download also data that we will use to validate our model. Finally, let's download the Chesapeake land cover map. TorchGeo allows EASLY to intersect NAPE data and Chesapeake land cover map. In this way we will associate the image with their labels. Let's do that for training as well as validation dataset. So far we have only three big tiles for training data and just one for validation. The idea is to do data augmentation by cropping subtles from the original data. For this purpose let's define the ratio between training and validation dataset. Let's define the total number of samples that we will have after data augmentation. For this showcase I'm just using 20 samples but to have acceptable results you should use at least 500 samples. Once we have defined the number of training and validation samples we have to random sample images from the tiles. The random sampling from the original tiles can be done for random geosampler class from TorchGeo which receives a dataset object and allows to specify how many samples we would like to have from it and their size in pixels. In this case we're going to create an equals train underscore size tiles of 300 by 300 pixels. We can, then, simply pass the random geosampler to the data loader to generate the data loader that will be used for training and validation. In the data loader we could also define the batch underscore size and the stack underscore samples. Stack underscore samples. Stacks a list of samples along a new axis and is useful for forming a mini batches. In the ne next cell we're going to iterate over the train data loader, select a random batch and pick the first element of that batch for visualization. In this notebook we will train our net network to do image segmentation over the downloaded geospatial data. If you are interested to this historical network, I've shared here a brief description of the architecture as well as in addition you have the reference to the original paper. In the next cells, I've simply copied the UNET neural network architecture from the original project. Let's now define some parameters for training. We will just use the first three channels of our images. We have 13 classes in the pixel masks. We have to instantiate our model and move to the device we're using. If we're using CPU this step is not necessary. Let's define criteria to calculate the loss as well as the optimizer. In the next cell we've the logic for the training and validation. 
we've to fix the number of epochs on which we will train our model. For this showcase I'm using 10 epochs but it is suggested to train the model longer. We will also initialize some variables as the best underscore lost and a dictionary to store the loss for epoch. For each epoch we will iterate for each batch of the train dataset. Each iteration consists of a forward pass, loss calculation and backward propagation to update the model weights. At the end of each epoch we're going to calculate the average loss on the validation set and we're going to store the model if the loss has improved. The training will take several minutes. Normally in the next plot per batch epoch you should observe a decreasing trend of the loss. Here the result is still random, indicating that the data considered are few and the number of epochs is very small. Let's import our trained model. In my case I've a model that I've trained on the cloud with more samples and few epochs more. We can now do predictions with our model. We can compare the predicted mask, rightmost image, with the labels, image at the center. We can observe how the model has started to learn how to recognize classes as for the class in dark blue. We could still improve the results by training longer the model and or by implementing more advanced techniques to avoid overfitting or to evaluate the best model. I hope you have enjoyed this explanatory notebook on how to train a deep learning model for semantic segmentation. See you soon in the next video.